Good morning. Let's just jump straight over. Over here to the code. To the GitHub. See what's going on. Happy Sunday. Ah. Uh, all right. What are we doing? Um. I think last Sunday we were working on the ability to have our uh, background task management, uh, which is essentially like a a queue. Um, like when we put items onto it, uh, when those items complete, they can have like additional things that get queued. So like instead of queuing one thing, we queue like a, a list of things to do. So that was, um, I think we've been continue doing that, but a note. So I think I've been complaining about this for months and uh, specifically in the UI, I was noticing a thing where like when we go into a stream and the stream has, you know, a lot of data elements. So we get the list of all the video clips and all their inputs. We have the, uh, this as well. And so in the code, this is all uh, array inputs. So that's a React admin component. That basically lets us say, okay, so the, the data is an array of elements and they have, you know, that array has it's an array of objects, right? And with keys and values, and we, we um, do various things with that, right? So we create a, 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 an array of components uh, from that array. And so especially like video clips here, there's a lot, um, audio, there's, there's a few. Um, I think maybe the transcript is also modeled. So there's a bunch of stuff that's array inputs. And what we're seeing is that every time I change anything in the form and I click save, it was taking minutes. It was uh, potentially just crashing the tab. <laughs> it was, uh, and it had an odd behavior too, where if I had the dev tools open so I could pause JavaScript execution and then resume it, then it would work. And it, you know, it wouldn't hang forever. Um, so I did a little bit of uh, digging and I found this issue on React Admin. When a form contains array input with large entries, it takes more than a minute for the form to be submitted. So this is this is exactly the issue. Someone else was nice enough to open this on April 19th. Um, they did some, uh, you know, great documentation. Uh, did some of the things I was trying to do on stream uh, as well with like trying to analyze performance and the, uh, um, uh, by profiling. Um, and so there's a lot of discussion here. And basically at the end of this, this should no longer be a problem with the latest version of React hook form. So React hook form is a library that React admin uses. Uh, and so I was uh, pleasantly surprised that when I updated React admin, um, it fixed the issue. And so uh, <laughs> that was what was uh, finally made it not so annoying, uh, tedious even, uh, to go through and prep all of the streams uh, that I've not yet gotten on YouTube. So these are all the streams, not including uh, the current stream, <laughs> that uh, I still need to turn it into uh, VOD videos by cutting these up and getting them on YouTube. I have one that I don't have any video clips. Ah, I forgot. I was gonna do that actually. I was uh, So this was the stream on 519 where I streamed from my laptop from a hotel. So I need to go get the, the, the local recording off the laptop and bring it in here. But uh, anyway, just as a note, so that, uh, you probably won't hear me complaining. <laughs> <laughs> any more about uh, that that issue because it's fixed. So thanks to to all the folks involved in troubleshooting that and uh, they opened the issue here. Get field state removes unnecessary. Huh. Yeah, 
invalidating a touch subscription. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, well anyway, enough of that. It's fixed now. All right, so we're gonna continue working. Um, gotta figure out where we left off. So here, here's the new pull request, 77. Uh, this is the, no, no, this is the old one. Okay, so this is, this is the old pull request where I had started to make the changes necessary to, um, to model how we were going to do this, um, these follow-up tasks, right? So when a task is done, there may be additional tasks. So that was called a next task, which might have additional next tasks in like a chain. Um, lots of warnings here. And then we have this, uh, we did some abstraction of what it means to push task and, and those sorts of things. And I think, and then in uh, the task worker, we changed this to handle queuing up the next, next task if it's there. Uh, so here is the new pull request, uh, number 110. And um, this is kind of what we did last stream. So we changed next task to be a task template. So instead of it being a, a next task, it's a task template. Um, and we have some warnings. I think I fixed those afterwards. Um, let's see. Yeah, let's th ignore those things. I, th I think a lot of things are fixed locally. Uh, this is just a formatting change. Okay. So we did some work in thinking about how this was going to work last stream. Um, and I think after the stream, I also did a little bit more, um, for this. So let's see where we're at. What's, uh, what's going on here? Oh, right, right, right. So let's, let's. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and remove these changes. I think. Let's see, what did I do? Um. I did just approve a bunch of dependent bot pull requests that were updating dependencies. So let's see. Front end, package JSON. Did that change? 4, 16, 17. So that's the same. Package lock. Go ahead and commit these. I'm gonna need to pull down the changes from main and merge them, but deal with that later. Uh, let's see. There we go. All right, what else changed? So I changed the log level in the Docker Compose file. Get that committed as well. Um, we. I think I was chasing down some type issues in the front end. And these things have nothing to do at all with this, uh, this pull request. And if I was, you know, collaborating with other people, I would probably want to create a, a separate branch and move these things over to it. But, uh, Hey, it's just me for now. So, I think all these front end changes are kind of related to things I was tweaking to make some uh, lint warnings or errors go away. Nope, that, that's, that's not a correct message. Um, let's see, fix some front end. 
uh, let errors warnings. All right, so now we have the backend changes that I think are actually related to uh, what we're trying to do. Uh, so, let's see, I added uh, derived clones to the task. Um, we don't actually need the error here, or do we? Do we want to trace that we tried to convert the hash map into a Uh, or rather, that we tried to parse the payload and that failed. We probably want to trace that, actually. Let's uh, let's go back to the file. Good. And then if we we get the next task and it exists. Oh, hmm. So something I know is that when you call from str, instance of type T from a string of JSON text, right? So where Type T is coming from the fact that we're saying the next task is a hash map. What if, can I do this? No. <laughs> no. So I can't, for instance, say um, pattern match based off, the, off of the type. Okay. Which means that like, if this is null, which it could be null. Um, ooh. Can we do that? No. Uh, expected reference, uh, string, found, static, str. Okay. this Yeah, so I could transform the value inside of the the maybe <laughs> that's returned from get to be, you know, uh, well, I say maybe, but the type is called option, um, to be, to contain a string slice. Or... Oh yeah, I could do an if inside of here. Could do that. Or do dot to string. 
That was the method I was looking for that I was not getting uh, auto completion on. Can we do that? No. Cannot do that. Is this like a precedence thing? No, 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 I think this is a tuple. Hmm, okay. Well, let me go the other way. And, uh, can we just do map? Yeah, like that. We have an old warning. Okay, so now this is a, uh, A string reference, an STR reference, and that all of this still works, but now this sum can match. So if it if it's a null, <sighs> I'm not completely happy with this. I would rather the circuit JSON have a way. Let's check something out really quick. It's not really satisfying. I mean, it's really cool to be able to pass a type parameter implicitly and then have it see if it can match the JSON to it and make that just work. But what if I want to say, okay, well, if it's null, like, what if I want to do things based on, like, it could be multiple things. How do I ask, is the JSON representation in next task, null. Like if, hmm. You can imagine if there was a space null, like that's still, Right, so if we do JSON, JRun, JSON.parse. Uh, if I only I could type, whoops. See that parses is null, even with the space, right? Which means there are cases this doesn't cover. Um, In, 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 in the, in general, I think specifically we can probably rely on um, task next task either being null or being our uh, actual next task object and not have any weird spaces or other white space or anything in it. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna live with this. Uh, the the whole point of this is I wanted to add back that error here so we can trace um, because this would be now this is an error right um, there are two valid cases it can be null because there might not be a next task or it should have a parsable object that is a hash map that can then be converted with try from Okay. Well, that was a little bit of a rabbit hole. Uh, anyway, so this is our try from uh, for task template. 
So this takes a hash map. Oh, I, I get it. So this is recursive, right? So we are, we are saying, if you have a hash map, how do you go from that to a test template? Which is why at the end here we say, okay, test template. But because this is recursive, it can contain another task template. We have to handle this, this case. If the, the hash map contains next task, this is what we do. And the reason there's a disparity here, right? Where it's like, this is a hash map, but the stuff inside of it, um, like next task or JSON is because the expectation is that this hash map is what we're getting back from Redis from a an actual hash map in Redis. Um, yeah, yeah, okay. And then we have a similar thing here for, well, it's another try from implementation but for Reddit CMD, which is fun. So, uh, oh, 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 right, right, right. So this is how do you convert a task into a thing that stores the task in Redis? It's so clever, right? So this doesn't actually do anything, but this is the command to do it. Um, and I think we should also trace an error here. Like if we have an error, we can definitely trace that, that error occurred and what the error was. Right, so this is us setting that hash map for the task. Uh, and then here is, okay, so this is the one that's similar to the above one for task template, but this is for task. So if we have a hash map, how do we turn it into a task? And this contains then a reference to, uh, if we have a next task, then we can um, very cleverly, like if we just pass task template, that will use our implementation of try from uh, from str from sturdy json will use r from uh, try from implementation when it parses the string to turn it into a test template okay so this is like all of our data loading serialization deserialization stuff right how do, how do we get stuff in and out of redis essentially um, and then we have a change here to create task where we are now also including a next task option to create task. And then, then we also updated update task status. So when the task status changes, we can publish information about the, the next task in that publish. Um, do we have something that when the task finishes, we push the next task from, yeah. Oh, also I added some, uh, some little unit tests. Uh, I, I just asked Copilot to add some tests and then took out the ones that were silly. So like, if you go down here, you can see Copilot attempting to write more tests. And then it starts trying to like simulate interacting with Redis. And this, you might think, I'll probably get connection is where, yeah. So I don't want any unit tests where we're actually connecting to Redis. No thanks. Um, I should probably figure out how to add some more unit tests here at some point for this, but uh, for now. Uh, and then what's this change? I added a series ID. I had, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is this again has nothing to do with the work that we're doing. This is some stuff that I was tweaking as I was trying to uh, actually use the application the other day. Um, 
Let's see. Update stream simple view struct to include series ID. It's been updated to include new field. Optional string represents ID of the series associated with stream. Yep, that's that's accurate. Something changed in transcription. Oh yeah, we had some warnings. And some things where oh right, right, right. So this was an issue. Um I was trying to mainly debug. Oh, I love this commented out. Let's fix this. Um, oh, actually, you know what? I think I'm gonna leave this like this. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna trace it, but we'll we'll just return a default value, um, a stubbed out value. So there was there's a case where in parsing the results of the uh, speech to text transcription where it gets confused on the last segment. Um, and I took this opportunity to also get rid of the use of unwrap here so we don't panic. So just some cleanup. Again, unrelated to the task work, but uh, let's see here. Refactor audio extraction and text segment function. Refactored instead of using taking action that uses S, uh, uh, no that's not that's not really the thrust of what we're trying to do here. Um, use of unwrap was uh, removed and uh, some. Parsing errors were changed to return um, zero and trace a warning. All right. So I think this this is what we were looking at already. Yes, good. All right, and then the other changes are over in. Uh, oh, this, is this more? Is this more code cleanup? Oh no. Okay. Okay. So. Um, Record try into instead of record into. Oh right, right, right. Because we changed um, over over here, we changed. Oh, it was probably before this commit. At some point, we changed um, our implementation of try to be an implementation of uh, the try from trait, uh, and so this fixed. So this changes it, and then I'm also explicitly saying what fields we're returning in the get list handler for the tasks API. Right, and then I left it to do provide next tasks. Right, so um, all right, half an hour in, I think. I'm finally caught up from where I was last week. Uh, that's just how that goes. Okay, so in, I saw in one of the pull requests, I think it was the old pull request. Um, okay, that's just use cases of what we wanna try to do. Um, okay, task worker queues, next task, task API supports next task, update the task UI to show info about the next task. I think these are still the same things we need to do. I'm gonna, yeah, don't care about that. Um, and I think we have absorbed everything from this PR, so I'm probably going to close it next. Um, Right, so we did update push task in the lib. You know what's good for this? The outline, uh, if I'm looking at the actual file. Push task. Generate, oh, I called it 
So we have a create task. Okay, that does the thing. And that includes next task. Um, no, that's not the same at all, right? So this creates the task record. Um, Q task is what I call it. Q task. So that takes the task and let's add some task must already before it could be, hold on. It helps if I can see. Uh, this is done via the create task function. Okay, cool. Just a, a, a note for myself. Um, do I want to add parameter documentation? Nah. Okay. Okay, so I think we do need to do something similar to this change for task worker still. So I'm going to look into that next. Task worker queues next task, right? So if we go to the task worker, the fact that I don't have any outstanding changes for it uh, is kind of telling. Task worker main.rs. Okay, so we have a work function. We have. Move this function, move this to a function called save task data. Uh, yeah, we could do that at some point. So at some point here, we need to wait. What is the what is the function of this function? I see. Okay. Yeah. If the task has a next task. That's what we want to do, which we're not doing right now. I'm pretty sure, right? So we we pop the task off the queue. The task I, I say, but that's you know whatever the next task is, we grab off the queue. Um, and if we, assuming that succeeds, um, you know we then lose our connection to Redis or whatnot. There there wasn't a fatal error. Um, then we update the status of the task, and then while uh, the cursor, so the cursor is the thing that we're getting back from doing the work of the task. We get back a cursor and then we use the cursor to just iterate, call, repeating the task over and over again until the cursor is null. Um, and then once that happens, we end up down here. We trace that we finished the task. We update the task status to complete. We remove the task from the working queue. So the question is, I think what we need to do is we need to add then. Yeah, we need to do this here. Like we want to stage the creation of the new task before we remove the current task from the, the temp queue, the working queue. Um, the idea being that if we fail, somewhere before that point, 
uh, we know that we are in a weird state, right? If we have things that are left in the working queue, they are in a incomplete state. Now, a thing I have not dealt with at all is dealing with those tasks that are in incomplete state and recovering them or requeuing them or anything like that. Um, not to say that I won't at some point, I just haven't gotten around to it yet. So, um, if let sum next task equals task at next task, Q task next task. Um, so this is not sufficient. For a couple of reasons. Um, one, the one that I was thinking of is the fact that we need to save next task, which is the task template, as um, a record in Redis. Uh, but then the thing that occurred to me as I was looking at the definition here is that this takes task reference, and we don't have a task, we have a task template. So we need to convert the task template into a task. Um, that should be straightforward to do. So we want to do something like uh, let task uh, is dot is it dot from or will it be dot from <laughs> this is a better question that doesn't exist yet. Um, but we'll say this is a task. We don't, we don't have a, a, a thing to um, convert it yet, but we will, we will. And then we wanna uh, create task. Like so. We need to import it, which we didn't need create task before. Uh, it takes seven arguments. All right. Okay. So I see. So there's two things I could do here. One might be to implement uh, the from trait on task template and then have that do create task. Although it's a result, so I can do try from. Mm, that might be slick, right? Do like try from. But doing that, I like that, sure. But um, the issue is that trait, the try from, doesn't accept arguments, and we would need the Reddit's connection in order to call create task or do the equivalent thing. So I think what we're gonna have to do is um, just not do this. We're gonna do let task. And then we need to pass all the arguments, which those are not. So we need the ID. Um, which we don't have an ID right now, but we could generate an ID. Okay, I'm gonna write this out, but I think what I'm gonna need to do is I'm gonna need to take this code and move it to the lib as a, its own function. Um, Ponder this for a second. I wonder if it might make sense to create a, our own trait that we implement both for task and for task template.
and then we can, you know, implement it for both. Um, said implementation probably just calls create task. Not gonna bother with that. Uh, so let's say ID equals. Well, next test doesn't have an ID. There is a function for generating an ID, right? See, task has an ID. Task template doesn't, um, because task template represents kind of a template of how to create a task and not an actual existing task that's been created in Redis. So there is a um, generate task key, data key, queue name, um, where, create task. Okay, that presupposes the ID. Where are we calling create task? So here, we take an ID. Okay, so we have this code. So here's a question. Why, did the, why does this need to be here? Why is this not inside a create task? Right. right now, there's only one thing, soon to be two things, like we're implementing in the next thing that's going to call this. Um, why, do, why do we need to pass like this block of code, ignoring the part where we're dealing with Axum and like HTTP statuses and stuff, because our error handling here is also going to handle that. Um, we just need the connection. So I think what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. I'm gonna get rid of this argument to create task. And then in the lib for a create task function, this is gonna come down here. And we're going to uh, rearrange this a little bit. Um, and we're going to Yeah, there we go. Task counter key. This is the thing we can do, right? I don't know why that needs to be public. There we go. Great. All right. So in main, no, no, in tasks. Ah, so now, now we can't directly refer to ID, but we can do task that ID. There we go. All right. So that uh, we still have this to do here. We'll come back to that. I want to finish doing this worker stuff first. Okay, so now we don't need an ID. That's good. <laughs> uh, okay, so we need title, URL, payload, data key, uh, next task. Uh, and what is it trying to do? It's trying to take the title and the URL and the payload and the data key. I don't know why it's doing some task ID here. That's wrong. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we're on the sixth argument. This should be next task. Uh, so this should just be next task. That next task. Does that work? It doesn't like clone. 
Um, so we expected a an option of a task template and we got a option of a box of a task template. So we need to unbox it. Um, is it is it a box? How do you feel about that? All right. Um, no. What's wrong with this code? It thinks it's right. Maybe box is a reserved word. <laughs> okay, there we go. So that satisfies that. That is a option of a task template. Um, and task is a task. And we want to queue the task that we create. I guess I'm gonna overload the, no, I'm not gonna overload the name. Uh, ooh, 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 let's do template for clarity, right? So this is some next task template is task.next task. And then this becomes like this. And then the thing that we are uh, dealing with now is next task. And that's what we'll pass to queue task. Um, and at this point, the issue is that we're trying to borrow partially moved value task. Partial move uh, occurs because the value has type task worker task template. Okay, does it? How do you mean? Oh, right, right, right. So inside of task, there is a task template type, and it doesn't implement the copy trait, right? So if we go back to lib, can we just imp implement copy on task template? Is that allowed? Really no idea. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, that, that opens a whole thing that I don't know enough about to really go down so let's let's go back to here borrow this binding in the pattern to avoid moving the ref okay so if we just do this okay now that's not happy cannot move out of next next template dot next task blah, blah, blah. Next task template dot next task, which is behind a shared reference. Consider calling as ref or as mute to borrow the types contents. Option map takes ownership of the receiver self, which moves next task. You can clone the value and consume it. This might not be your desired behavior. Can we clone, cone, clone that? So what are we doing here? We are making a copy of the option that contains, so a box is just like a, my, my mental model of this, and this may not be completely accurate, but it's like a, a pointer. And the reason we have the box is so that we can have a type, uh, like an ENA uh, struct that contains itself because the box is like a container pointer to point to a thing of this type. So we're cloning, we're making a copy of the, the option containing the box. And then we say, okay, in that copy of the option, we can unbox it to get the reference to the task template So then we have an option of a task template, but it's a separate option. Okay. Well, at least the, <laughs> the types all check out apparently. 
So that's good. What else do we need to do here? Huh. Let's go back to here. So we want the task worker to be able to queue the next task. Do I... I think I think this is good. I was saying before maybe I would pull this into a function and put it into lib, but I might still do that. I think if it was clear to me like if if um it would occur to me kind of like I was I was mentioning the idea of like having a trait or something and you know implementation of that or some other kind of like some way of modeling this that would be like i'm not just going to create a function called uh q uh next task from task or something uh i could but it would just be taking this and moving it to a different file i don't think i'm gonna bother doing that when it's a one-off like if we need to do this multiple places but that's unlikely then we could think about like what is the model that we're you know what is the what is the this interface what is the what is the metaphor but uh nah nah uh okay so task worker queues next task task api and task ui right so if we go back to here uh we have in our handler in the api um, a place where we could pass in our task template to create task uh, if we had that. So I think we just need to modify create task input to be able to take a task template. Next task. Uh, let's call it next task. And what does this look like? So this has to be an option of a task template. we should be able to do because this is like a public pub struct task template. Uh, and it takes a URL, a payload, a data key, and a title. It's very similar to this. Um, in fact, instead of referring to this kind of this internal type here, another thing I could do is I could just nest this. I wonder if I could get away with doing something like this. Yeah, we have a warning because we don't we don't use it. But we're we're gonna fix that. And this is nice because this this then doesn't refer to kind of internals of like our uh, representation of next task in like below the API layer. Um, the issue then is that makes more work, right? Because create task takes option task template. So then we'd have to translate between them. I think it's easy enough to do something like this and then implement the, the translation logic. If, if we need to kind of decouple those things. But in the absence of that need, I'm just going to do this. Conveniently, that means that I can just do this. All right, we have some warnings. No, we don't. Cool. Okay, so is that it? <laughs> Well, that's it for task API supports next task, right? So we're gonna be able to pass in, in the JSON that we post and the body to this endpoint, next task. Um, and then for the other side of this, right? Being able to enumerate or get um, the task information we probably want to I 
I don't know that we need to get like all the detail. Like we're not returning back to data key or anything like that in task output. So maybe get one handler doesn't need to do that. Um, we still have to do's on these. We don't currently support deleting like canceling tasks. Maybe someday that will be a thing. Uh, and we should have a list. Get list handler. And we return. I don't know. Do I need to? I don't think I need to return like, oh, hey, this task exists and it has next tasks. I don't. What if I did has next task like that? That could be good. Yeah, uh, and thus concludes our work on the API. Um, the next thing up is gonna be to work on the UI pieces for this. So we need to um, at least have the, hmm. there might be a type in the front end. Ooh, what happened there? Hey. Gjad, I've just followed. Gjadev, thank you for the follow. Welcome in, hello, hello. Uh, interesting timing. I'm about to take a break. So I take a break every hour. Um, for a couple of reasons. One, because uh, I am sitting down. I have a standing desk, but there's just so much stuff and wires that I rarely ever uh, elevate it. Um, so I'm gonna take a break. I'm gonna go get some more water. Uh, Twitch is gonna wanna run ads. So uh, stick around if you can. I'll be back in just like three minutes uh, and we're gonna continue working on this. I'll be right back. <laughs> 